Every time I do it, I do it for my hood. And every time I do it, I do it for yo hood. And every time I do it, I do it for they good hood. Uh, it's hood. understood. I do it for <laughs> the hood. I thought there was a good in there. No, you don't. What? The, every time I do it, I do it for the good. I thought you said I do it for their good. No, no, he's a gangster thug. <laughs> he ain't gonna be doing it for their good. I thought you said he's for gonna his be hood. doing it for their hood. <laughs> No, what the fuck? You need you don't understand rap. Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Baby, I'm for real. I won't pull out if you want to peel. Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Baby, I'm for real. Welcome back to the couch. It is Netflix and Chill, episode number four. It is episode number four. I'm glad you can count. My name is JP, back again, hosting the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast. This is Carly, joining me on the couch once again for another episode. And tonight, we're covering Anti-Birth of the year 2016. Had a VOD release in 2016, so this is not officially a 2017 film. Uh, but just catching it now in 2017. It is uh, directed by Danny Perez. Do you know him? No, I do not. All right, not yeah, we all. looked at his IMDb. Nothing. I, I haven't seen anything that he did before. So this is this is uh, the first film that I've seen of his. I don't know about you, but I like to look at who directed the movie, if I liked it, or even if I didn't like it. Because yeah. then if I see something else with their name attached to it, I at least know... If it's going to be shitty or not. Yeah, or at least Possibly. kind of what to expect. And uh, this is a United States and Canada co-production. So this is a, you know, a canuck type of movie. <laughs> <laughs> it actually does feel like... I wouldn't be surprised if this was shot in Canada, actually. Yeah. It, it yeah. definitely felt like it, it had a lot of, um, I guess, Canadian... canadian Yeah, it definitely felt like it did. I don't know. Do they tell you where the film is set? I don't think they do, actually. Okay, so yeah, it's probably Canada. Canada. <laughs> anyway, uh, it had a $3.5 million budget, which is pretty insane, honestly. No, yeah. Nobody's really getting that kind of budget nowadays in the indie world, so I was a little surprised at that budget. So uh, what is the storyline, courtesy of, like my homie Dave says, the B? Off okay. of the B. Well, we got... In a desolate community full of drug-addled marines and rumors of kidnapping, a wild-eyed stoner named Lou wakes up after a wild night of partying with symptoms of a strange illness and reoccurring visions as she struggles to get a grip on reality while stories of conspiracy spread. Yes. It's funny when you say... A stoner named Lou wakes up in a wild night of yeah. party with symptoms of a strange illness. Because you think it's a dude the whole time. Uh-huh. Luckily, they threw in that she there at the end. Yeah, so it is a female. And first of all, one thing that I thought was really cool about this um, film, like, right away, is that it actually has, like, notable faces in it for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know any of these actresses, but you have Natasha Lyoni. Who is from... Is that how you say that? Lyoni? I don't... I'm not Leon. sure. It might be Leon. I'm, Leon. I, I have no... I don't know. <laughs> You're supposed to be good at the one I, that's good at I'm that. I'm good at spelling, not pronunciation. All right. So uh, she is most notably from the American Pie films. She played the friend who lies and says that she got... That she banged Finch and he was a beast and stuff. And then she turned into a lesbian by the end of the whole thing. Which she actually looks like a lesbian yeah and it might be yeah. because i've seen her in orange is the new black and she's a lesbian in that show oh, i've too. never seen that so yeah that orange, would help <laughs> yeah she's she's really funny in orange is the new black she actually plays believe it or not a junkie in orange is the new black <laughs> perfect yeah so she kind of had she's kind of typecast maybe the director saw orange is the new black and was like Dude, this girl would be perfect for my movie yeah um and i i actually have always liked her in the small roles that i've seen her and she's also in detroit rock city have you seen that i have not that movie is one of my favorites of all time she's in that movie she she says like i think it's because she says like dude and man a lot 
Um, like she's kind of tall. She's definitely like tomboy. She, exp- and like yeah, in she this fits. She film. fits the part very well. Yeah. Um, also, you have Chloe Savini in here. Who is that again? Okay, I, I looked. I knew who it was. She's been in tons of stuff, but she actually got her start in Larry Clark's film Kids. And I showed oh, you yeah, a little you bit sh- about. That's kids. where I knew it from. I was gonna like tell you, like, hey, this is from like that movie you just showed me. Yeah. Like, wasn't she, was she the main girl with the short hair in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she's the one that slept with Telly and got AIDS. Spoiler alert. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, Kids is one of my all-time favorite films, and she actually was just, she, I don't even think she was an actress when she got that part in Kids. Mm-hmm. She was just one of the street kids. Like, I told you how that movie was made, and... Um, I think it said she was in that gummo Yeah, movie she's too. in, she's in that, she's in a bunch of, because... I don't know if you know, but Har- Harmony Kion, whatever the hell his name is, he wrote Kids at like 15, and then he made Gummo. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought they were connected somehow. Yeah, so um, she's been in a ton. That's actually her, I think that was her husband at one point, or her boyfriend. Really? Yeah, the huh. guy who made Gummo and wrote Kids. Um, but I'm not sure. But she's been in tons of stuff. She she actually became quite a big actress after that film and, and you know some other films, but... I thought it was cool that she was in it, and then I didn't even know that this person was in it. Um, you're like, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, because you know we didn't watch this one together. But uh, I thought you were joking around when you said you didn't know that was her. No, I well, you, I said I was like, I was like, oh, did you see who was in uh, fucking Anti Birth? And he was like, yeah, yeah Meg, Meg Tilly. Tilly. And I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> I'm not even talking about Meg Tilly. I was, and then I was like, you're, you're like Jennifer Tilly's sister. I was like, Jennifer Tilly with the big tits and the nice voice from Brad of Chucky? You think that's a nice voice? I do. A lot uh, of people okay. hate it, but uh, I think it's I think it's kind of sexy, honestly. Oh, well. Her sister kind of has that voice, like I noticed. Yeah? Like from watching this movie. Now, Not was, so much in She Psycho was too. Lorna? Holy yeah, shit. She, I know. She looked horrible, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I don't okay. know if she looked horrible just for that movie, though, or if she actually looks like that. Okay, so so we, right away we established that there's um quite a quite a oh wh- where was Meg Tilly from Psycho too yeah which it was weird like yeah I, she ran away from the fucking nuns and stuff no <laughs> what do you mean I thought you were a psycho are you a fake horror fan Justin no. JP whatever <laughs> <laughs> sorry She's the chick with the blonde hair no 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 okay. that's Diana. Something. I don't think you've seen Psycho well, I've too. Seen Psycho. Anyway, let's move on here. So basically, she did give a little brief description of the plot, but I figure I'd go into it a little bit more. Basically, we're fallen junkies, um, drug addicts, people who are chasing the thrills of life and just kind of, kind of not, li- just kind of living with the flow, not not yeah. have any aspirations or anything like that. They're okay with how they are. Sometimes they might feel a little bad about it, but for the most part, they're just they're doing their thing. And uh, specifically, the Lou character, um, we see her early in the film at a party, and some like shady looking dude like comes and grabs her up and like leads her down a dark hallway or something at, at this party. And you assume that she either got raped or date raped or something like that. At yeah. least that's what I assumed. Yeah, me too. Um, especially with a film called Anti Birth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we basically are following her with uh, her friend Sadie, Sadie. played by uh, Chloe Savini. And um, she uh, she begins to feel kind of symptoms of like a sickness or whatever. And she has this old lady, vet lady, who like says, like, you're probably pregnant or something. She's like, yeah, right. I haven't had cock or something in a yeah, long she's time. like, I ain't banged in like a year. Come on. <laughs> it was like three months or something. Was it like two it actually, months? Actually, she said a year. A year? She was oh, like, it's been shit. like a year. Like, yeah, well, she did literally. look kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, she, yeah, so um, it kind of just follows her as she progressively starts to get worse with those symptoms. The symptoms are getting worse. And you then kind of are filled in a little bit more details on possibly that um, more more people might be involved in what's happening to her than, you know, there's some people up to no good, essentially. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess that's kind of your story. Um, it gets kind of weird towards the end. We won't spoil anything. Um, but what what is your, like, first impressions of the movie? Um, at first starting out, like, I almost felt like the first couple of scenes were kind of, like, 
random almost. Like I felt like it was edited, so it's like, okay, first they're here, now they're here, now they're here, and then like I don't know if you like you you know that like I think his name was Mickey maybe the black guy who like drives her to the place yeah. how he just kind of randomly is there and i'm just like who's mm-hmm. this guy all of a sudden well, so like okay i'm, I'm gonna kind of cut you off there because okay um that brings me to my main point on this film that i yeah. liked and also didn't like mm-hmm. and that's drug culture all yeah, right? yeah. So drug culture is very interesting. Um, if you've ever been around drug culture, you'll see some familiarities in this film that you'll know. Mm-hmm. And then there are some other things where you're like, that really doesn't happen or like that does, that's not how they would do that or something like that. Yeah. One thing that I did like is that this guy just showed up into her life for a second, gave her a ride, and that was kind of it. He went and bought her uh, a birth control pill or fucking what am i talking about pregnancy, uh, pregnancy test, test. Yes. <laughs> hey, one birth control pill please yeah so that oh. is something that happens in that sort of lifestyle where you know people and they're in and out of your life and you don't that it and it was done purposely i believe the director chose to have this character who was kind of throwaway like he doesn't die later in the film he doesn't get brought back up in the film. Mm. He just comes to give her a ride. And there's a little hint that they might have had some sort of he might he was probably into her yeah, at one yeah. point. And so, like I I do I I do see what you're saying. Like at first watch I was kind of like, well they got some random characters here like the vet you don't see again, you mm-hmm. don't see that guy again. And at first I was kind of like this movie seems all over the place, but then later on I thought about it and I was like well, my day-to-day life, like, yeah, sometimes I'll see people for one moment and then, mm-hmm. like, they're gone for weeks. So yeah. I guess, like, I did like that, too. That's, like, yeah. one of the big things I loved about this movie was Th- it felt real. In today's filmmaking world, it's so important to have every character have a reason for being there. Yeah, when, yeah. When in real life, that's not the case. Like it, Like, most of the time, the people that you bump into every day are not significant in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't have a significant role. They don't have an end story. Like, they don't need development and then an arc and then a payoff for mm-hmm. that character. And I do like, in films like this, it makes a lot of sense not to have that standard introduction, development, arc, payoff. You don't need that in, mm-hmm. in this type of movie. And I like that. And they also, you know, when they go and talk to that lady and, like, there's a bunch of people in the house, you don't know who those people are. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? At the beginning of the film when she's talking about being, uh, you might be pregnant to the vet lady. Like, there's other people there that you never see again. Yeah, I guess you're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, and th- when they're bowling and stuff, there's people that you don't see again. And, and when, you know, they, like the girl, when they she goes to her job, there's that girl that you Dude, see one yeah, time. yeah, that's another thing I was thinking about. Like, she goes to that, like, random motel job, and then, yeah. Yeah, so and, she's she's getting high with her friend Sadie. Um, they go back to her house, which she actually inherited from her father who fought in the Vietnam War and got that house for free being in the military or something that was paid for. Which I love that house, by the way. Like, I think it's so, like, just scummy and, like, perfect. Yeah, it's like... For, like it's it like, looks like a real, like, place that, like, a scumbag, dirty person would just... No, be. it is. And they do look like that sometimes. That might have been a nicer, uh, more high-end one, honestly. Yeah. But, but, like, I liked it when... They go into the house. It's in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And, like, they go in and Sadie's like, holy shit, it's cold in here. Do you have any heat? And you know what I mean? Like, because I remember, like, when I was, you know, not to go too personal or anything, but, (laughs) but, you know, like, I I used to, I used to party in houses with no heat and stuff, you know, like, (laughs) like, even as a kid, like drinking forties or something, you know, Mm. like, so I understand what that's like. And it's funny to me that. You know, they captured some of that realism there, but there was also other stuff. Like, when she was smoking the bong, Mm -hmm. I kept feeling like she wasn't smoking it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm not a fucking uh, master bong smoking. I don't even like pot. Yeah, she was, like, (laughs) choking on it, like, every time. Yeah, but it it was just, like, the way she was hitting it just seemed off. Like, like she she wasn't, like, clearing it, like, when she was hit. Like, it was just weird how she was doing it. But, um... Maybe some more, you know, fucking established smokers out there might be like, you're fucking wrong, dude. She's <laughs> True. But I doubt it. Which, I highly yeah. doubt it. 
Um, so yeah, they did capture that nice little um, subculture of like drug addicts. Pretty cool, and I, I like that. And I liked her place. They they kind of set that up cool, and um, you know how she her fucking fridge looks like it's from the sixties and oh, stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which it probably was because that's when like the Vietnam War was. You know? Yeah. So um, and then like another thing, like I know those two actresses are like they've been in like big stuff before. But I actually did not recognize them like from this movie until I looked up other things they played in, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could see that." So like to me, like the like Lou especially, like you could have literally pulled someone off the street and had them play that character, and I would have believed it. <laughs> like I would have thought, like, is this like a real person or is this like an actress? Yeah. Like I just felt like she looked like perfect. Yeah, she did, and she was wearing the fishnets, and like she pulled her uh... her makeup was like. Like her eyeliner was real dark, and like she just looked sickly, and like yeah, just like she looked like she, she looked didn't like take a care junkie. of herself, yeah. And yeah, she looked like she wore the same clothes all the time. Yeah, like she did. Like she even says when she takes her shirt off that one time, she's like, "Do not smell that." <laughs> yeah, she does. And you know, she's d- wearing the same clothes every day, which happens when you're in that lifestyle. You know, yeah, you're you not worried about changing yeah. clothes. You're not worried about taking showers and stuff like that. Hell, you might not even have water to take a shower. Mm-hmm. Um, so they both looked like they had that. And she also didn't have a car and relied on other people for transportation. I thought that was cool. Mm. She also had, like, a shitty job, like, a motel job, one that looked like um, like it was ran by, like, fo- like somebody from Russia or something. Yeah, you know I mean? that was, like, so sketchy. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, for the listeners out there, um, it, it's always it, – I know this for me for sure, but I'm, I would bet money for you too, but – um, because we have worked in the hotel industry before, oh, yeah. both of us have. Um, when we see, when I see people like pushing a cart or in like a laundry room or something, like that I, was my I know cart. I have that cart. Yeah, you, that <laughs> cart that they push, I literally just bought you. Yeah. <laughs> For not don't like, say it like you make it sound like that was my birthday present. <laughs> Thanks. Not with my money, with yeah. the company's money. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I just like I actually wrote that down in my notes, like the motel scene. And just the things they were saying, like, they were like, oh, like, and she finds, like, that box of pizza and she's eating it. And I would find a box of pizza and think, like, I want to eat this. Even and though you it's would eat like, it, too. No, no, no. No, she no, would no. eat it, too. Oh, no, it's no, listen, my boy Steve would. <laughs> really? He would always, he would, like, go and clean and then he'd be like, oh, dude, pizza is sweet. And then he'd, like, he'd just go into the room and eat the pizza. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest. I did do that a couple times when no one was looking. What? But let's just go. Let's go. What? We're not talking about work what? on this podcast. Did you really? That's gross. I did. What? Listen, I was hungry back. <laughs> like I never ate. Did you at least know the people in there? No. Oh, it was clean. They could have just done the pizza. They could have. They could have just done the still, pizza. I'm alive. You're pregnant now. No, it was <laughs> a year ago. It was a year ago. That's how it works. That's not what pregnant is. That's how it works I'm in this movie. Control. That's why she got pregnant. No. Yeah. I don't think that would be. I feel so attacked right now. Dude, listeners, she's nasty, dude. I am. Anyway. So it was cool to see them that she like – it's cool that she like kind of had this job where to me I got the sense that like she didn't have to go into work like every day. Yeah, she was like – She's I like, swear. oh, I'm out of money. I got to go to work. And then she – which I have had jobs like that. Mm. Yeah, I was confu- I was almost confused at first because like the one scene she's like, oh, I got to get back out there and go to work and like – you I thought didn't know. she meant, like, find a job. Yeah, I thought either that or, like, she was a prostitute. But like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's my immediate but thought. But I thought, I, see, you're dumb as fuck because oh, okay. in my head I would never make that assumption because she said she hadn't had sex in a year. I thought she said that later on in the movie when the pregnant, like, stuff really started to kick off. Like, I don't... Mm, I don't know. Listen. I still think you're but like, okay, fuck. no, 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 but listen, because she... You're just trying to get out of being dumb as fuck. No, 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 just listen. Hear me out. Because she, like, said, I gotta go back to work. Like, she was out of work for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe she wasn't yeah, doing I her dues. Know. You know? It doesn't sound right to me. Okay, I let's, think let's just move along. Let's move along. Um, so, yeah. Um, then it's, it, it, like... So this is the setup, and I'm really enjoying this movie at this moment because I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, wonder where this is gonna go. It's gonna get. There, I really didn't have any complaints up until you know this far, <clears throat> and then she kind of like passes out in one of the motel rooms, and she gets waken up by 
Meg Lorna. Tilly's Carrie Lorna, which, by the way, everybody has weird names in this movie. I know, Lou, I've never heard that. As a is girl. It, yeah, no. like, is that short for something? Or Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, they, they, so she, like, kind of weirds her out, and she's like, oh, blah, 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 and you get an idea that this girl knows what's going on, and then um, Lou goes back home, falls asleep, passes out for, like, a couple days. Yeah. And then all of a sudden is, like, fully pregnant, like, nine months pregnant, pregnant. Yeah, that was crazy. I and was her just like, foot Holy. is like got a big oh, blister on it. Oh my god! Did that bug you? Yeah, I could I, tell. I felt like the effects were pretty solid. That like, like yeah, they, not, they were gro- bad. They, Like it reminded me. Like the only other movie that's ever made me gag is The Fly, and this was pretty damn close. Yeah, moods gags all the time in movies. <laughs> <laughs> he does, but like to me, I, the the anticipation of the blister popping. Like, that was getting to me because it really did look like a blister. I know. But then when she popped it and it was, like, gel that was coming out, I was like, it didn't gross me out because I was like, that looks nothing like what comes out of a blister. Yeah, I do. If it looked more, like, realistic. like and gross. Yeah, like, like, white almost. like water almost. Like, because mm-hmm. a blister isn't, like, thick that much. It's, like, it's like watery almost. Yeah. And if that, that would have looked more like that, I probably would have gagged. What about I've, the? I mean, that wasn't the only gross scene. Like, there was a scene before that that really bothered me too. When she's in the bathroom, like she like just gets home. I think it's before she passes out. She looks in the mirror and she's just like, "Oh, she got that shit all over." Yeah. No, I think that's when she first wakes up. No, I thought. I don't know. It I get, might be, I get that whole be. part confused. It might be. Yeah, so it like it's real weird because when she passes out, it almost gets into like a. Um, like hallucinogenic type of um it's actually called like psychedelic body horror i think it's like what they refer really? to this movie as yeah i looked it up because i was like i wonder what they would consider this like sub i would definitely consider it some body horror i could definitely see some cronenberg sli- sh- shining through that's mm-hmm. interesting that you said like the fly yeah that's immediately what i thought about and this is a canadian production it looks like it's um filmed in canada and honestly like it feels like very Canadian to me. I was thinking that when I was watching it before I even looked to see if it, I, I, I when I was going down the list, like going down IMDb before I got to where it was produced, I automatically already thought that it was going to be Canada. So um, it was actually filmed in um, Ontario, so that makes sense. Oh, okay. So um, I was thinking like more like like. Vancouver or something, but I'm not really. You Canada whiz. I'm not not super honestly. Honestly, I would have no idea. I'd just be like, oh, it's Canada. I know a little bit because of um, moods. Obviously, like he's talked about Canada so much. Um, I like Canada is cool and stuff. I could, I wouldn't be able to take the igloos honestly. (laughs) (laughs) So um, Eskimos. (laughs) Yeah. So. Like, I don't know what you think about this movie, like, up until then, but was you digging it? Yeah, it definitely was. Like, it kept my interest. I loved, like, I just loved how real it felt. Mm-hmm. Like, one thing, like, I got all the, like, you know, the bad guys, I guess. Like, the drug guys. Like, I got them kind of confused. Like, I would get them mixed up. They'd be talking about, like, oh, where's Warren at? And I'd be like, I forget which one Warren is. Yeah, there, I, I know what you mean. I didn't have an issue with that, but yeah. um, I did feel like the, um, the, the main characters would just mention other characters mm-hmm. that you never really met. Yeah, they made them sound like important characters. Yeah. And then, like, you're like, oh, well, I, I don't know what's going on with this character, though. So once... She is, you know, like nine months pregnant after like a couple days and she begins to like start to put things together. And then for the viewer, the plot is like kind of pieced together and we see like what's really going on, like with why, because obviously that's not normal. Mm -hmm. That's where I started to have beefs with this movie. For one, when she is nine months pregnant, nobody seems to be like, what the fuck? (laughs) You know what I mean? True. Like it, it really bugged me because I was like. I was like, why is nobody, like, flipping out right now that she is nine months pregnant after fucking two days? (laughs) You know? Yeah, yeah. And then another thing that bugged me is she all of a sudden, and I might have missed something if I did clear this up for me. Okay. 
all of a sudden she start she starts to investigate that night that we see at the beginning of the movie. She's like, yeah. she's like, something wants to happen that night. Yeah. Why? Like, why is she, th- why is she think that night was yeah. the night? Yeah. Be- I guess because she was messed up at that party. Oh, no, no, no. Because she, probably because she had that dream, remember? Did she have a dream? She okay, I was about dream. to say, I don't remember what was going on in her dream. <laughs> I think she, yeah, the dream was really weird, with, like visually very like psychic. She like, kept seeing the acidity. fucking, she kept seeing the people from that fun land or fun zone or whatever. The like yeah. costume people Which in is, her dream. Yeah, and I think. They're like Teletubby looking. Like I'm pretty sure it was related to that night. That, okay, I was like, about to say, because that kind of annoyed me when. Aren't, whoa, 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 aren't the guys from those like Teletubby looking guys, aren't. They're the like, they're the guys. Like, One of them works there. I thought like that was like their secret place for like dealing what they do, oh, yeah? drugs and stuff. Okay. Yeah, because remember they're like watching it on TV and they're like, oh, they're, t- they're turning that place into a fun zone. There's going to be a lot of fun there. <laughs> like remember he like yeah, that's like their place. Yeah. Okay. So um, okay, that makes me actually like the movie a little bit more that she had a reason for remembering that night because the whole time before that she isn't saying anything about that night Mm -hmm. and i'm like as an audience we know that had something to do with that night and she doesn't even consider that like she could have got date raped or something that night because yeah so i was like what so why all of a sudden would she now because there were it wasn't even just that dream i think there was a couple moments where she was like about to like she looks like she's like fading out and she starts thinking about that night. But oh. I understand what you mean about how she never really is bringing up that night as like a possibility. She's just saying like, oh no, I never had sex. Like she doesn't think yeah. she was, like I did think it was weird she didn't think she was raped if she was like Especially being, being like a druggie like that. Where you're like... Yeah, you're definitely probably raped at one like point. Like, you're probably like... If you're getting so fucked up... Like, now one thing that I will say is they don't, like, show her do, like, heroin or anything. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be all about heroin, but it was more like... She was just... Smoking like, pot. Coke. Like, that's the I only... I think she, like, snorts something, too, at one Did point. Did they? Okay, because... At the motel. Oh, yeah, 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 the hotel. Um, the motel, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, because I, I was... I, I get the sense that the director... Wanted you to understand that she was a hardcore drug addict, like a junkie kind, mm-hmm. but without explicitly showing you it because maybe that would have – maybe the writer slash director might have thought that that might have weakened your liking of her. I do feel like she's more of a partying alcoholic than like a drug addict. That's what I got out I of it. I got the sense that she was supposed to be like a actual junkie, yeah. but we didn't see that. Like, because just alcohol, like, functioning, like, partying alcoholics, like, can, like, they're functioning, you know? Yeah, she, I mean? you're right. She's not having a job or anything. She's just kind of going to, yeah, like, like, not she, caring at all. Yeah, that, to me, that looks like she's, like, doing meth or um, heroin or, or, honestly, like, all drugs. Like, she looks like one of the people that are just <laughs> down to do any drug that they can get their hands on. True. Which I know, I know people like that, too, that would never really had one love per se you know what i mean mm-hmm. as, as they say one love um <laughs> heroin my only love uh, <laughs> um but so i i think that the director made the choice the writer director made the choice to not show her do some of the more hardcore like drugs like shooting up um heroin or something like that because maybe it would make you sympathize less with her because right away she's already a hard person to like because she's a junkie yeah you know what i mean so showing her explicitly doing all this stuff um probably maybe would put a bad taste in people's mouth but i would argue against that you look at films like requiem for a dream and honestly kids um and and films like that like you don't like you don't have like you don't like any of those people per Mm -hmm. se but like you know that they are your protagonists. Like, it, like you look at a film like, um, uh, what was the one I just said? Requiem for a dream. Requiem for a dream. Or kids. <laughs> Requiem Perhaps. for a dream. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Requiem for a dream. That movie is, you know, 
like you feel for these people and they're junkies, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like you, so you can do that. It just takes talent and how you write the characters. But yeah. And I will say I did like this girl just because she's not, she just doesn't give an F. Yeah. She's she's, kind of like, she's like like proud. Like she said, makes comments that are almost funny mm -hmm. sometimes just like, Oh yeah, don't smell that. Or like, I can't afford to turn the heat up or like, Oh, I got to go back to work. You know what it is? Huh? And this is I've no, I noticed this as well. This is, I remember thinking about this when watching the movie. So I'm glad you brought this up. Mm -hmm. You never see her complaining about her life. Yeah, that's which what makes I'm her likable because yeah. you know, like you you know, how some drug addicts, some people depicted in movie and real life, mm -hmm. they sit there and they use and use and use. And then they complain and complain and complain why their life sucks. Yeah, like I can. But like it's I'd like probably... she self admittedly knows her life sucks, yeah, she's... and she's still cool with it. <laughs> she's just drinking out the bottle and just sitting in her place, just like, uh, oh well. Yeah, Using she, a bat as a cane. She's not depressed. Yeah, like I most love it. drug addicts are. You know, she's not. It doesn't look like she's um, trying to heal scars or wounds. Like, like. She's just a drug addict. She really, she reminds me like, like naughty, like she really doesn't remind me of a drug addict. She reminds me of like almost a biker gang member who's just like, a biker gang like, I don't know, like they go to bars and like, she just reminds me of someone who goes to like the bar and like parties and like, like I just don't get as much the heroin. Like she looks like a heroin addict, but like, I, I don't know. I just don't get that vibe from her. That's because they don't show you that she does heroin. Yeah, but, like, it does say she's a stoner, like, in the description, too. So, like, I'm just picturing, like, a pothead, too. Yeah. I think. I just picture I she know. does anything she'd get her hands on. She's yeah. just down. I picture Coke, because she does. Yeah. 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 But, so, um, once we find out, like, the, the and this is, like, the huge beef that I had with this movie. I just feel like it went in a direction that was just kind of lame, honestly. Like it just it just wasn't as cool as what was happening early on in the film, and and one of my biggest problems with it is that once we get a reveal that the people behind her ha having this issue, once we find out what this issue is, why, why, what's the purpose of doing it to her? Because she was like I know like. I don't know how they would find out it was her, but she was, like, the only one who could go through with it perfectly. Yeah. But, yeah, but like, how, why her? Yeah, yeah, why her? I think they were just... I think they were just experimenting. Yeah, but on... why with people on the... Sh <laughs> like, it didn't make sense to me. Like, like their, why not do friend, it? Their friend, you mean? Like, the person no, they know? Anybody. Like, anybody at all. Like, why, why would they go this routine? Because they went through multiple people, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. They Lord, went through, I'm... like, a middleman and was like, yeah, here, like, you know, give this to her or something. Like, like this, these people went through all this trouble to give some junkie something. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. I was like... Yeah, it's like right. she, she, like why that her? Like yeah. I'm trying not to spoil it, obviously. Yeah, I know it's hard. But right I'm just now. like it made no sense to me. I was like, I was yeah, because like, like Lorna no was like a, she's the one who was the marine. That's why that thing said that. Yeah, yeah, she was the ex marine. Yeah, so I guess you're right. She has nothing. Yeah, I understand what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I do get like I didn't. I did not think about it. Yeah, that way at he all. did. The director writer did not think this well through. Like it, to me, it just was like it, it just makes no sense. It. It's like reaching. It's convenient. It's like, why is it this way? It's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this happened to this person? Yeah, but how do we get them to have that happen to them? Oh, well, I don't know. Like this person up here did this and then – you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it's like the idea of what's happening to her is cool. But like once you find out why, it's just like that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so that like really hurt my rating on this one because I was just – I just – I wasn't with it. But I did actually – really dig this movie besides that is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to i was gonna ask what did you think of like lorna oh no honestly i think you could have completely written that character out of the movie i really didn't like her like that was my biggest thing with this movie she kind of just got on my nerves like yeah. i felt like she was un like you said i feel like she was unnecessary it, it, it almost took the film to like and it, it like the film's already supernatural or um, science fiction, yeah, ish. Early, 
when you find out that this girl's like nine months pregnant after like a week. <laughs> but then they take it to another level when they add the Nor- uh, Lorna character. Mm-hmm. And there was really no payoff with her either. There wasn't anything like... Oh, yeah, no. There wasn't anything that you're like, man, like, damn. Like, Go Lorna. <laughs> like, and you, you instantly know... Like, you can pretty much call what... She, like, what's up with her. Yeah. Like, you know what Yeah, I mean? there's no... It's a typical character. Yeah, so... I think that you're right. She could have been completely written out of the movie, and it would have been the same movie. Mm-hmm. That was probably like my biggest problem with it, like because she like comes in more towards the end too, and then like so like the whole ending was kind of like mm-hmm. uh, I wish she would go away. But... And and you're right. There is some there is some like um, very lazy writing when it comes to some of the because for a movie that is like kind of advanced and it's. Uh, culture and like its interactions with characters what some of the characters are up to is very predictable true like there's one character in particular where it's like oh who didn't see that coming Mm -hmm. are you gonna twirl a mustache while you're at it (laughs) you know what i mean exactly so like yeah that that stuff really can hurt a film and it did with this one honestly like i this film could have been like you know it was 2016 but had those problems that I mentioned not been in the film and it had, like, a more cool, like, strong ending, like, this could have made my top ten. Yeah. But it's not even close because of those problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, I think that's about, like... So, like, the very ending, did you like that or was that, like, a problem for you? Um... I mean, we can't spoil what happened, but like. I mean, it it, it looked cool. Like I was like, okay, yeah, this visually, looks I cool, and I'm okay with that. But it was just like if that had happened, I would be okay. But just the like all the the plot line with why it happened just pissed me off. So I was mm-hmm. like, I can't even enjoy this cool looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean. But that's about it for me, I'd say. All right, so if you want to, we can go ahead and get into ratings. Um, it was your pick, so I will rate first. Okay, fair enough. That's how we'll do it from now on. All right. That yeah, was your pick, by the way. Yes, it I was. picked Sadako versus Kayako. Yeah, I happened to pick two movies about <laughs> pregnancies for some reason. In a row. Sounds like you're trying to say something. No, no, no. They just, they, things like that creep me out being a girl, I guess. They creep me out being a girl, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Grace, Mm. Rosemary's Baby. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Um, Makes me not want to have the kids. Yeah. Have you ever seen Hanger? No. (laughs) (laughs) I can guess what that is. (laughs) It's not really a, it's like a comedy, but it's, it's like, by Canadian director Ryan Nicholson. Oh, okay. um, anyway, let's get into ratings here. So um, I actually did enjoy this movie. Like, I, even though I had strong beef with some of the writing in the film, I never was bored in this movie. I never wanted to be over. I was into it the whole time, even when the reveals happened, and I was like, "That's lame." I was still <laughs> into seeing if they could somehow save it. Yeah. And that means you're invested and you care about the movie because you care that they're ruining it. Um, and they necessarily didn't ruin this one, but it, they did definitely uh, sort of hinder themselves a little bit with the, the whole way that it ended. Um, I'm still going to come in you know, relatively high on this one, though, because I did really like the Lou character, and I really liked Chloe Savini's character, and I really liked... Um, just the interactions between Lou and these random people that entered her life as a drug addict or stoner or whatever. She's definitely more than a stoner. <laughs> and um, I I think that baby stuff is gross and creepy too. Like I really do. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mm-hmm. like baby stuff. It's it's mm-hmm. it's good in my horror. Like I'm always. That's why I recommended you like Grace and yeah. Um, love I, it. I think I recommended you Rosemary's Baby as well. You did yeah. love that too. Yeah. So. Um, I do like that, and you know, I didn't recommend you Shelly, but even there was some, some cool moments in Shelly with pregnancy yeah, stuff. Yeah, disturbing stuff, that's what I love. Yeah, so, and this film isn't that funny either, it's you know, more science fiction-y, but it, it's definitely like, hor- it's it's a horror film too. Mm-hmm. Body horror as well. They could have actually amped up the body horror a little bit, and like really showed like how fucking terrible like it was with that thing growing inside her. Yeah, they like, really didn't do 
they went a little bit light on that, I felt. Yeah, but there's just the like scenes isolated did. scenes of body horror. Mm-hmm. It's not like a cohesive, like the fly, like the entire fucking thing is. Body oh, yeah. Horror. Ew. But anyway, um, I'm going to come in at a 7 out of 10 on this one. I did really enjoy Anti Birth. It just has problems. Wow. I'm actually like kind of surprised that you came in that high. Like I felt like you were going to dislike it more than I did, which I I really liked it. Like I love same with you. Like I love the setting. I love the characters. Winter I setting was cool too. I liked the yeah because it wasn't like straight like piles of snow. It was like melty snow. That yeah, it was like, like real. Shit. Once again, like <laughs> realistic. It wasn't like a Christmas story where it's just snowing on Christmas Day. But um, yeah, I love like I love like a lot of the stuff about this movie, and like even the parts that you had beef with. Like I didn't really think that far into them until like you just brought them up now. So I didn't really have a problem with them while watching it. And like I thought the ending was cool looking. And yeah, my only my biggest problem really was with that Lorna character. And I actually I came in with a seven out of ten as well. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, um another episode down. Um we will definitely be continuing that there was actually a ton of movies added to um Netflix recently. And there was uh, there's a couple Shutter exclusives coming. So as I mentioned, we do we do mess around with Shutter a little bit. Shutter's actually for people out there who who don't know Shutter, like Shutter's dope. Yeah, know? I was looking at it the other day, and they did have cool movies on there. Yeah, yeah, Shutter is is like prime for horror fans. Like if you're a streamer, if you're not like a huge DVD collector, like I highly recommend grabbing Shutter. It's only five bucks, guys. Like don't don't waste that. Um, and they get. They get, like, cool exclusives. Like, they got 31 before any streaming places. Mm. They got Phantasm Ravager before any streaming places. Which, I know we've seen both of those. I think they had all the Phantasm... Like, I looked on there the other day, and I think they had all the Phantasm movies on there. They might. They might. Because I I didn't, like, get it yet, but, like, I was looking through it to try to figure out what movie we were doing. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, so... um, so they have a ton of selections and stuff, and it like the only, I just have minor problems with like the actual like hard the software of it, you know, like the app and the it's like doesn't have a streaming app on Xbox, which really annoys me because I, I I mainly use the Xbox for most things, um, so I, I get tired of watching it on my PC or my phone, um, so that annoys me. But mm. besides that, it's it's a great service. Um, I I really really like Shutter and. Even though Phantasm Ravager thirty one, both those was extremely disappointing for us. Yeah. Um, if you were somebody who didn't go an hour away to see it in the theater, and it's appearing on this is the first time you got to see it, you know, like that'd be pretty exciting, like to see a, a new movie like that. Yeah, I'd be down. Yeah, but... you know what I mean. And there's some. There's some there's some cool stuff coming to Netflix this year, guys. I think Stephen King's uh, Gerald's Game, uh, directed by um, Flanagan. You know, Flanagan Flanagan's done really good. He made like Hush and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, he's he's pretty much nailed all of his films. Um, I think that's Flanagan who did Hush. I'm gonna sound dumb if it isn't. You told me that before. Yeah, so I'm okay. pretty sure you're right. <laughs> so, um, Gerald's Game, like that's coming to Netflix. We'll definitely cover that. Um, and now we're going to be starting to see like 2017 films that we'll be covering, which is nice. Yeah. Um, because, um, it, it helps me for the end of the year show and stuff. Uh, and you know, maybe we could even do, which would be fun to do a top 10 Netflix and chill of the movies we covered. Yeah. I would actually, that would be awesome. I'd love to do that. Yeah. So that's something that we could do. And yeah, so we're going to be covering a bunch of stuff, um, I want to. I definitely want to keep keep doing Netflix, but I also want to look at Shutter and stuff. Hulu and and Prime to a lesser extent because they don't really get a ton of new stuff. Um, but I can't wait for some of these exclusives to come out. Like there's already, I think there's one on Netflix now, um, so we might do that next week. But who knows? Um, it's my pick next time. Ooh, exciting! So yeah, that's it. I yeah. am JP and I am Carly. See you next time. Back on the. Couch. Couch, yes. You suck at that. That. Baby, I'm free. I won't pull out if you want to pee. Uh-uh, uh-uh.
got a DM from a teenage beauty Wants me to come to a spot and watch goonies So I slipped me a roofie Then slid my dick in a slippery booty Rolled up some reefer On the lower back while I beat that beaver In the bedroom theater Pulled it out of her ass Wiped off on my t-shirt She want red wine and dinner, bitch You getting red vines and twizzlers Soft porn, cock in the popcorn Show some respect Robocop song Blew me till the teeth hurt Bust two nuts, that's a double feature Who would have thunk it? Netflix, the new code word for fucking Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Baby, I'm for real I won't pull out if you want the pill Baby, what's the deal? You wanna watch Netflix and chill? Baby, I'm for real I won't pull out if you want the pill 